You spell meatloaf two words. Now the food, you don't spell a food two words. It's all one word. 95% 95 of the people in my world uh, calling me, people not in my world call me by my other name, and I'm not even going to say that because I changed that in 1984. Yeah, uh, it was Marvin, and oh, God, I hated that name. You know why? Because I was really fat when I was a kid. And, um, and so, back, back when I was a kid, they didn't make, it's not like now they make Levi's for, for cows. Uh, back then, they made Levi's basically to fit like four sizes. And they didn't make mine. And I had to wear pants with pleats. And 1958, a commercial came on the radio. I started a commercial. And it was, poor fat Marvin can't wear Levi's. Now, I've never forgotten that. And uh, so I, I, I wouldn't let anybody, I wouldn't write it. I wouldn't let anybody call me that. The only time I ever, I ever saw it was when I had to sign my tax returns. Other than that, it was ML. Okay, now, so I said, that's it. I can't deal with this anymore. I'm changing it to Michael. So I went before a judge. I had to go in front of a judge, and, and it was, there it is. I'm changing Michael. I had to fill out all these papers. I, I had a lawyer do it for me, and I, then I presented him. I didn't need him to come to court. And so, excuse me, I'm having to chew this gum because I'm taking this medication, and it's making my mouth dry. A nerve medication and so and that gum was flying around my mouth when I'm talking for some reason I'm able to sing with it but I can't talk with it I don't know so anyway I'm in front of this judge right and um, he says to me so uh, Marvin I go yeah you want to change your name to Michael I said yes and he said uh, oh yeah you keep in your middle and your last name he goes well why are you changing your name uh, do you owe money? I said, no. He said, are you trying to skip out on something? I said, no. He goes, you have bail in your time? I said, no. And he goes, well, why are you changing it? I said, 1958, Your Honor, there was a commercial on, and my name obviously is Marvin, and it was poor fat Marvin couldn't wear Levi's, and I was so fat, Your Honor, that I couldn't wear Levi's. He said, are you serious? I said, yes. And he turned to his clerk and he said, um, will you go get my, uh, my stamp, please? And so the clerk went off and he goes, so really, there's nothing else to the story? I said, no. And he goes, you know what? If it was today, you would own Levi's. And so normally it took six to eight weeks for a name change to take effect. He filled out this paper. And I was like, mm, get the documents, they're heavy. But filled out this document, and he put the stamp on it, and he said, Michael, here you go. Pleasure to meet you, Michael. And he goes, are you meatloaf? I go, yes, Your Honor. He goes, I'm watching you. I thought so. So he goes, I love your work. Thank you. And we left. And so I got my name changed in 15 minutes, and it normally takes six to eight weeks. So there you go. One time I did, a, I did a movie written by Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller, I, I hope you know who he was. Um, Death of a Salesman, uh, Crucible, some other things. He's a big time writer. I did a movie that he wrote called... Um, <laughs> right. It was with Bill Macy and Laura Dern. And uh, uh, I can't believe the name of the movie. Anyway... I had the fourth lead, and they, I, you know. But anyway, they 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 put up on the screen in the in the tryouts for the film. I can't think of anything right now, Sue. I'm brain dead. Uh, they had uh, Oscar nominee William Macy, Oscar nominee uh, Lauren Dern, Oscar nominee, um, yeah, um, and also Michael Lee Day. That's my real name, and. 
My picture is 60 feet big and wide. Give me a break. And people were writing down in their surveys at one of these test screenings, who's Michael Lee a day? I, it, my face is huge. And then they put me off a day and everyone went, oh, he's great. So that was it. That was paramount. And after that, it was all over. It's meatloaf forever. And that's okay. Meat, everybody calls me meat except my wife. Everyone. Except the IRS. And I don't want them to call me at all. My mother and father were gone a long time ago. My mother passed out when I was just getting ready to turn 18, and my dad when I was um, 22. No, 21, yep, 22. So they've been gone for a while. I have my mother and father with me all the time, even though my father was a, a piece of work sometimes, but still love him. And um, I have a grandson, his name is Rebel, and he's, I mean, I'm not kidding, and I know everybody brags about their kids and their grandkids, but I'm not bragging. I'm telling you the straight up, God's honest truth here. This kid is, uh, I don't know, he, um, Dave Grohl, uh, from the, uh, what do you, oh, I can't remember his band right now, but I know Dave, but I just can't remember his band. Well, my grandson was eight years old, and he played guitar with Dave Grohl and his band at a huge music festival in Kentucky, and he got up on stage, and he played one song with them. They started another song, and they counted it, and he opened the song on guitar. And in the middle of the song, there's guitar break, and he took it. Now, that's not it. Are you ready for this? He plays drums, and he plays better drums than I'm telling you half the people that are in bands that are famous for being drummers. This kid can knock them out. And my drummer, who's probably the best in the world, will tell you the same thing. Now this kid also plays bass. And in, in 20 years, oh, more than 20, ooh, boy. So anyway, all the bass players I've had, I've had one, one bass player that can play slap bass. This kid, he's nine, he was playing slap bass. I can't believe it. You know that mu musical, Music Man, I did that. I played the salesman on the train and we had to bounce up and down like we were on a train. That was stupid, that was my sophomore year. And I was playing baseball too, so I, I, I had to do that, but I only had to do this little thing. I didn't have to be at rehearsal every day and I could play baseball because they knew that if I was in concert choir, the baseball coaches knew I had to be in the musical. And so it was okay, I had enough time to go do the music man and be the salesman at the beginning of the play. The next year, uh, they did the musical Where's Charlie? I didn't have a song, I didn't, and I just only, I had two, I was in two little scenes and I knocked on the door and they said, come in. And I was Phelps, the butler. And I came in and I went, T? Yes, Phelps. Here? Yes, that's fine, Phelps. Yes, ma'am. And I turned around and walked off. And later on, I had to, me and another guy, I, I, would, I, I can't remember now what dinner was. I, I, but we had two choices. I know that. It was like roast beef or chicken. I don't, I don't know if that one, I can't remember, but it was like beef, chicken. Um, and that was one scene, I walked around this table with some other teenagers sitting at it. They were supposed to be adults. And that's Where's Charlie? And then my senior year, uh, we were, geez, I know nobody else ever did this, or I know it's unheard of, but we, there was four of us in a car and we were having drinking beer and it was on a Friday night, and but they were holding auditions uh, for the musical playing in Fancy, and they were holding auditions for the lead, 
and I had a few beers, and they bet me, they knew I could sing, and they bet me, oh, you won't go on dish. I go, I will too. I don't know what song I sang. I don't know. I don't remember that. It had to be something by Chuck Berry, but I didn't know Chuck Berry on Johnny Rivers. Uh, and Johnny Rivers covered all of Chuck Berry, and I didn't know Chuck he was covering this because I thought Johnny Rivers did the song, but Chuck Berry did the song. Now I know. Back then I didn't know that because I was only caring about football. And I got I went in the concert choir to get out of study hall. Also went into the drama dr drama classes to get out of study hall because I hated study hall because I talk all the time. Jeez, you no kidding me. And so I would always get in trouble and did detentions. And I couldn't go to detention after school when I played football, so it stacked up. So the second half of the year, when I was supposed to be uh, free as a bird, except I had to go work out. You had to work out every year playing football all the time. You'd go after class, work out. So, but I had to go to detention first, and they stacked up. So I went like, you know, 19 days in a row to detention. But I wouldn't get detention anymore if I did the choir, and I did drama. Now, drama I went to because, I, oh, I can talk in there. The choir I went just because it was a way to get out of study hall. I hated study. And so, first of all, I didn't like to study, so why go to study hall? And, uh, but I got hooked on drama. I got hooked on acting. I walked in that drama class, sit in the back of the room like some cool guy. Yeah, right. I, all the thing I needed was a cigarette and sunglasses. And uh, so that was that. And I'm telling you, Four days into that acting class, I was hooked. I was no longer sitting in the back of the class, sitting in the front. And I just thought, this is, after the first day, I thought, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, man. And uh, so I, I, I did four Broadway shows, two Shakespeare's, uh, three off-Broadway shows, uh, experimental theater at Cafe La Mama. I know you don't know what that is, but that's okay. Um, uh, the first one I did, I played uh, experimental theater. I played Father Time. I only had a big diaper and a sash, and I weighed about 290 pounds. So this big, giant, 290-pound guy wearing a sash and a big diaper rode a turtle up a, a hill, and I would say things like, and now time passed. It is now 200 B.C., and time still passes. And now, in 300 AD, and there would be all these scenes going on in front of me, and, uh, and, I, and I just rode the turtle up the hill until it was 1954, and the play ended in 54, even though it was 20 years before that. And so that was one thing. And uh, so anyway, it was fun. I've done a lot of theater. I did... Uh, Gene Harlow and Billy the Kid, uh, my, uh, good, I forgot his name. Um, look up Gene Harlow and Billy the Kid on the internet, and you will see. You'll go, oh, wow, he wrote that. And um, uh, I played, I obviously played Billy the Kid, and my line in that was, my boots, uh, they shine, they shine. And it was be I was talking to Gene Harlow, and we were in, in between heaven and hell, and they weren't moving us either way, Billy the Kid or Gene Harlow. So I don't know why Billy the Kid didn't go to hell. He shot all those people. Gene Harlow, I don't know what she did, but I bet it was good. And so anyway, that was a cool play. My boots, they shine. And, I, and it was another word all the time, another... Um, Description, they shine like the silver on the silver tray. I always did stuff with the southern accent. I don't know why I'm from Texas, but I never talk like that. They talk like that in Longview. In fact, one time I was going in high school, and we knew this casino in, in um, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and you had to knock on the door and give a password, and we found out the password all the time. But we stopped in Longview once to get gas, and the, this guy comes up, he was older than we are, but he was still young, teenager, older teenager than us, and he came up and he goes, can I check your 
Arrow. Excuse me? Can you check what? Your Arrow. I don't know what you're saying. And one of the other guys in the car went, I think he's selling, saying oil meat. And I went, oh, okay, you can check my oil. oil. Okay. And he said, that's what I said, Earl. And so just about a month ago, I met somebody from Longview, Texas. And they, all, they used to say everybody in Texas has an oil well in their front yard. In Longview, it is true. They have one of those, I can't, it's a, the pump, not the Derrick, the oil Derrick, but they have, everybody's got a pump. And I'm sure it's all leased and they make, you know, 50 cents every other day for the right to lease their property. They're not making, you know, $80 million off their little oil well. But I met him and he went, it's really nice to meet you. And I said, does everybody in Longview talk that slow? He went, what? <laughs> Never mind. Because everybody was talking really slow and the guy that was with him from also from Longview and he goes, no, not everybody talks that slow. Just him and the guy you met. So I went, okay. Love you guys. Last two words. Keep rocking.